I'm Vanessa Ryle and welcome to the Gatepost Arena Show. In our first episode of 2018, we have a real treat in store for you. We have our feature interview with leading event rider Laura Collett. We have a new series with supergroom Alex Van Tool, who will run us through her tricks of the trade. There's the first in our schooling series with British Eventing's national under 18 and junior European team coach Caroline Moore. We shine a spotlight on some of the products we've been testing over the last few weeks. And in the competition this week, you will have chances to win prizes from Dodson Horrell and Annabelle Brock's headwear. just outside of Lambourne, the home of the racehorse, to catch up with event rider Laura Collett. Laura has had an impressive event career so far. Starting in 2004, she has represented Great Britain at European and Nation Cup level. She's currently ranked 12th in the British Eventing Riders' Rankings, and a really exciting horse, Mr Bass, is laying in 15th place in the horse rankings. I'm here to chat to Laura about her impressive career so far and to find out what she's got planned to add to her CV in 2018. So Laura, your eventing career started off with your awesome 14-2 Noble Springbok. You had massive success at junior level and then went on to seniors at a really young age. How, how, how much pressure was that? It must have been huge. Um, yeah, there was a bit. I was very lucky with the horses that I had um, coming up through juniors and young riders. Um, I produced them all myself, so this kind of made it even more special. But um, then Ray F did my first year in seniors and yeah. it was all, all seemed to be going hunky dory until we actually got to the championships and they had a virus and then it all went downhill and then I learnt the hard way that actually life in seniors is a hell of a lot harder than juniors and young riders and then you have to climb your way back but um, yeah it was a, a real big step up yeah. out of um, young riders because they're very good at making it a real team, you know, leading up to it and making you part of the team and sort of holding your hand and then suddenly really? you're on your own. With the big boys. Yeah. God, that must have been really quite scary. Because uh, you, you were quite young when you went up to senior level and you had, you know, Toddies and Mary Kings alongside you. To have achieve, achieved so much at quite a young age, has that put pressure on you in a different kind of way? Um, I probably, probably put pressure on myself more than feel any pressure from anyone else, but um, it was really daunting. Like my first championships, I went to, I had William Fox Pitt and Mary King and all those on the team, and I was just like, this is crazy. Like yeah. because you you grow up and you're just in awe of them, and then suddenly you're on a team with them, and um, it was an amazing experience, but daunting at the same time. Yeah. Um, and I guess it wasn't probably until when I went to my next senior Europeans at Blair, 2015, I think it was, like, I felt more like they're now friends and not people that yeah. I'm terrified to kind of talk to because they're just so yeah. amazing. Like, You've got a poster of them yeah, like, <laughs> in your bedroom. And... They're, they're very friendly and very helpful and, um, you know, all those top riders, like Peter yeah. Funnel and yeah. Tina and all that a lot there. I get, I get on with them now, so I feel like, well, I feel like an oldie now as well. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say that. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> um, and being part of a team, obviously being in all the world, Europeans and Nation Cups, how important is that team kind of spirit and environment for you? It, it's really important, but it's, it's, at the same time, it's very different to how it was coming up through juniors and young riders. Um, it was always very similar people on the team, and yeah. like, I did every team I did was with Emily Llewellyn, so you know we were really close, and um, you sort of knew what, you knew 
who was going to be on the team pretty much each year. Yeah. Um, so it was it was very similar. Whereas now it's a, a different ball game, and um, you have to fight so hard to get a space on the mm. um, senior team because of all the the older riders who are just you know they don't slow down, they don't yeah. stop. So um, yeah, that's it's a lot more challenging. Um, but then I guess it's more rewarding as well at the same time because you don't expect anything. And both both times I got the phone call to. Um, say I was on, on the senior squad I was really shocked I didn't expect it at all um, whereas I guess in juniors and young riders I kind of knew where I was at because you have the trials and yeah. if you've done well in those you know you're, you stand a pretty good chance of getting selected so yeah, um, yeah it's it's a totally different ball game well, You had a really nasty fall at Tweezledown and sort of you must have thought at that point gosh is this sort of the end of my career how did you cope at that point? Um, not really, because I'm quite stubborn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I have to be as a horse yeah, rider, I guess. Um, I was quite lucky um, when I woke up um, in hospital. I They had all my pain meds under control. And so I actually thought, because I didn't remember anything from the day, and mm. I just thought I'd had a full cross-country schooling, and when could I get back on a horse? And they were like, uh, about that, actually, you're quite broken. And I was adamant I wasn't. I, I think I was meant to be going to Hickstead to do the Ventus Grand Prix like three days later and I was absolutely adamant that I was going to be riding there and everyone was like, when's she going to realise that she's, she's actually in hospital? pretty smashed pretty... up? Um, yeah. But that's that's all I wanted to do was get home and the day I left hospital I got on RAF and all I did was walk around the school because to be fair I was a bit smashed up and I couldn't do anything but that's that's all I wanted to do and everyone said, oh, did it not put you off? But I guess not remembering anything probably was the best thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... Yeah, stubborn, and the more people questioned whether I'd get back on and go eventing, the more I was like, right, you're going to prove, prove them wrong. wrong. Yeah, because it was only seven weeks from you having your injury till you went back. Yeah, competing again, um, it? looking back on it now, it was a bit stupid of me, and that is one thing I would say to people if they have a bad fall is actually genuinely make sure you are better because mm. I was very lucky. Um, Yogi Breisner was very strict and said I was only allowed to ride the advanced horses. Um mm. And it probably wasn't until three months later that I suddenly thought, oh, I actually am I'm better now. And I looked back and I wasn't, I wasn't right, but I was lucky the horses looked after me. We'll rejoin Hannah and Laura later in the show where you can catch the second part of that interview where Laura will be running us through her plans for 2018. The eventing season is nearly upon us, so who better than supergroom Alex Van Tool to help us prep for competition? Right, when we're clipping ahead, we're obviously not leaving our horse tied up because that would be irresponsible. So Mystic's going to a little show tomorrow, we've decided, for the purpose of the camera, and we're going to give her a little beauty treatment. So head collar out of the way. Put us on, good girl. Literally follow the jawline, get the worst off. Even if her face is hairy, you can still make them look more presentable to go somewhere in public the next day. See, straight away, she likes a different horse. Horses feeding on hay in stables are subjected to very high levels of dust. The dust particles contain bacteria, fungal spores, dust mites and mould spores, and very quickly enters the horse's respiratory system. Some particles get trapped by cilia in the trachea and flushed out by mucus, but others are not flushed out and can cause inflammation. Others get through and onto the lungs and into the bronchi and bronchioles. Some can reach the alveolar sacs and here can cause inflammation. A recent study by Dr. Julie de Villiers and Dr. Emmanuel van Erk Westergren showed that 84% of horses studied were suffering from inflammatory airway disease. The same study found that steaming hay with hay game reduced the incidence of IAD by 63%. 
Haygain's unique manifold design steams the hay from within. Haygain, that's pure horse sense. Now it's time for our Spotlight feature, where we are going to show you some of the products we have been testing over the last few weeks. Horsewear's Adelaide cord breeches are a great choice for winter riding. They are soft and stretchy, providing great comfort both on the ground and in the saddle. The corduroy fabric provides you with a little extra warmth on these cold winter mornings, yet not bulky or restricting. The elasticated thinner material around the ankles means they fit comfortably in long boots and are easy to get on and off. The smart gingerbread colourway and stylish back pockets give them that extra edge. We've been using Bedmax for the last two months. We hadn't changed our shavings uh, supplier and uh, I've been really impressed. I was always intrigued to try something different and I have to say we're using less. I think it's a lot quicker and uh, the horses really love it. It's really cozy. They, they lie down every single night, which they never used to. Um, so I'm just going to quickly give this a bit of a makeover and uh, you can see how it looks afterwards. Mountain Horse's Snowy River Paddock boots have kept my feet toasty and warm this winter, and most importantly dry, having succumbed to one too many leaks in an old pair of leather boots. The brilliant grip on the outsole has saved my bacon on numerous occasions when the snow came, and they are both super comfortable and waterproof. The zips were quite stiff to begin with, but now, after three months of wearing them every day, they really do feel like slippers. Alexandra Albanese's gorgeous navy Lugano coat with faux fur has so much to love about it. There's the cosy high collar and hood, the internal cuffs, the lovely long length that has back fence for riding in, and most importantly, it's warm, really warm. This is definitely a keeper, and my only advice is, don't forget the walls are still wet when you've whitewashed the stables. Epic fail. This ticks all the boxes for an investment piece for both town and country. It's safe to say that at this time of year, we can all get a little bit stale and bored schooling our horses. So we've decided to bring you a new series of schooling exercises with leading eventing coach Caroline Moore, who has competed horses at badminton and Burley and all over the world. In this schooling exercise for the arena show, Caroline works with two pupils on young horses, Ros Cantor and Ben Perry. On the first building blocks for teaching a horse to hold a line and improve its hoof brain coordination. If you were doing this exercise at home, it's ideal for warming the horse's muscles up before jumping. It's excellent for the horse's hoof brain coordination. It develops the horse's core muscles by tightening its tummy muscles up and loosening its back muscles. And it also helps you teach the horse directional aids over a fence eventually. Here I've used three variations. I have raised poles, dressage boards, or blocks of square poles that actually all of them don't move. So that encourages the horse to draw back and use its shoulder and develop its core. So when you first use this exercise, go in a straight line, use a focal point as you see Ros doing, looking towards the direction she's going. That will help the horse use its own balance and it will help it develop its rhythm and use the poles effectively. You can see here, Ben just drops his head and the horse rushes a little bit and that's because he's losing his balance. Here, we look at the rider's eyesight. So as you see Ros coming through to this, she's got her eye looking up to the direction of movement and this will help keep the horse in balance and allow the horse to use its own balance and feel its rhythm. Here, Ben just drops his head a little bit and you can see how that just drops the rider's shoulders and he loses his position a little bit because of that and collapses through his core. So here's a variation of the exercise and here's a very good example of the rider teaching the horse to turn. So there she's asking the horse to start the turn through pole two and then keep it established through three and the horse will know where she's going by the pole four. So the important thing here are the turning aids and this is where the eye comes in, you use your eye to turn first, you drop the weight down the new inside heel, keep your inside shoulder forward and take your outside rein to meet your inside rein. She's told the horse and she's given the instructions on the turn. This is really important because it's the first building block to telling a horse where to go over a fence. You can see there the withers turned and the horse really knew where she was going. 
So in contrast to that, here we see a perfect example of the rider a little bit late looking to where he's going and therefore going to the inside aids and losing the outside shoulder. So by the time he gets to the board, or if it's a jump, you'll find that you'll be out of balance. So here you see Raz in slow motion. And you can see here from a side on view, there's no resistance in the turn. The horse accepts the aids, the turning aids that Roz is very consistent with and the horse is happy about making that turn and staying in balance. And with this exercise, it's really important to set up early. Ben was a little bit late in making that turn, so therefore the horse was going out through the outside shoulder. If that was a fence, you'd be in danger of having the fence down or even having a run out to the right. So the main points to remember here is maintaining your balance and rhythm as a rider. Looking to the new direction, so you ride those turning aids really effectively. Make sure you maintain the horse's energy levels so he can perform the exercise correctly. Be aware the horse might get tired, so make sure that you give him a break and praise and reward when necessary. We'll hear more from Caroline in the next few episodes of The Arena Show, so stay tuned. Now, let's head back to Hannah, who's with Laura Collett. You spent a bit of time at Oaksy House, which is just down the road here. What was yeah. that? Because that's tailored more for jockeys, isn't it? Yeah, um, I was really, really lucky um, to have the opportunity to go there. Um, I was on the World Class Programme and they funded it. And um, it was through a friend of mine who said, oh, I'll get you in there, the, it's the best mm -hmm. place to be. And I wouldn't have, there's no way I would have got back anywhere near as quickly without oh. their help. They were incredible because they... They know how far to push you and the mm. boundaries that, that are safe to push you. And every day I was in there going, are you sure? And they were like, yeah, you've got to do it. Like in the gym, like two or three times a day and physios. And and they have the belief that you can get back. Whereas yeah. I guess if you go to a normal physio and normal doctor, they're totally really, yeah. you know, oh, don't do that, don't do that. Whereas they're like, push you, but safely yeah. push you. They understand it's your career as well. Yeah. yeah. And working with riders is very different game we're all a bit mad Mental. and a bit tough and so 2018 you've had an amazing season and your career so far has just been outstanding what do you plan to sort of add to that for 2018 uh, hopefully uh, Mr Bass hopefully go to badminton touch wood and um, if all goes well um, which will be really exciting because uh, I've had him since a four-year-old so it'd be pretty special to have him there hopefully and you know it's the same every year is to try and get the results to get selected for a championship so it's where that would be my first world if I got selected but again the the strength and depth is incredible mm. in the British team at the moment so um just got to focus on trying to produce the results and if you get the phone call you get the phone call and if not it, there's plenty of other big events in the autumn to plan to go to and keep producing the young horses as well. And you mentioned Mr Bass, obviously he's currently ranked 15 in the British eventing horse rankings, but who else have you got that we could maybe keep an eye on for this season? Uh, one of the young horses, well, he's the nine this year, next year, whenever it is, 2018. <laughs> um, as a horse called London 52. Um, he did his first DCI two star at the end of this year and um, was second. And I think he's hopefully going to be um, super. He'll hopefully move up to CIC three star and probably do some of the event rider masters mm -hmm. um, and then aim for a CCI at the end of the year. So he's a uh, sort of up and coming one. And then I've got a lot of really nice babies of we four and five year olds next year. So. Um, I love producing the young horses, yeah. so yeah, it's really rewarding and um, I've got a real nice bunch of them, so fingers crossed there's another superstar in there. Yeah, you've got a knack for it too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Laura, anyway, for your time and good luck for the season. Thank you. Now, did you know that soaking hay, like steaming, can reduce respirable dust in hay but soaking, even just for 10 minutes, can boost bacteria levels by up to 150%. Haygain are running a special offer on their steamers until Sunday the 4th of February. And check out Chill Derek Saddle's Facebook page for details of their nationwide roadshow, where you can experience unique training with top professional riders while trying out one of their saddles. 
On the 27th of April 2018, the Mark Davies Injured Riders Fund are presenting an evening of cocktails, canopies and comedy with award-winning comedian Rory Bremner headlining this very special one-off London event. Find out more at thegatepost.com. Now, with the Cheltenham Festival just around the corner, you may well be heading to one of the Cheltenham Festival preview nights. But before you choose which one to go to, I'm going to tell you that the one you should be coming to is the one at the Railway Pub in Liverpool on the 8th of March. There's a great lineup, and me, but it will be really good fun. There's bound to be loads of crack. We'll give you loads of winners, and you can find out more details on my Twitter. To help plan your event season, you should head over to thegatepost.com's event guide, where you'll find everything you need to know for all the events you'll be going to, including route planning, hotels and local information. Entries are now open for Islam, Morton, Aston, Epworth, Tweezledown, Osby and Poplar Park. And of course, there's all the action from the Event Rider Masters to look forward to. The Event Rider Masters returns for a third consecutive year in 2018. Battles will be won and lost by the smallest of margins. Champions will be forged in the fires of contention. Join us as we travel across Europe with the world's most elite horses and riders, putting both through their paces in some of equestrianism's finest venues. From the style and grace of dressage, to the precision and accuracy of show jumping, to the power and adrenaline of cross country, in their quest for eventing's ultimate prize. This is eventing reinvented. This is the Event Rider Masters 2018. It looks amazing, doesn't it? Make sure that you put all those dates in your diary. Now, Sarah Hesseltine spoke to Paul Tapner of the organising committee from ERM about why the final has moved from Blenheim to Blair. He said, We were potentially going to have a substandard field at Blenheim in terms of the riders. The world's best riders are undoubtedly going to be at WEG. And as we want the world's best, it actually worked in that if we finish early at Blair, then hopefully that means that all those horses prepping for try-on can use ERM for their campaigning prep. Not just the top riders, but the top horses as well. That's nearly it for the arena show. Over on thegatepost.com, we've only just got over dry January, but we're now embracing feel-good February with a delicious recipe for chocolate and banana pancakes, which are too good to save just for Shrove Tuesday. We come to the rescue for your weathered hands with the best hand cream. And as February is Raynaud's Awareness Month, we've some expert advice on this condition that affects the blood supply in the body's extremities, usually the fingers and toes. And there's the latest from our urban equestrian as Cat Brown discovers a magical horse programme in the heart of Richmond Park, plus so much more. That's it from this edition of The Arena Show, but stay tuned for more features, interviews, and much, much more. And whilst you're here on the Facebook page, watching this show or on YouTube, don't forget to give us a like, hit subscribe, follow us on Twitter, all the usual social media outlets. But finally, let's keep this between you, me, and the gatepost.